<laughs> Why still keep doing people that? People are like every podcast we end up laugh, well, I end up giggling. And people are gonna be like, "Why are you giggling all of a sudden?" Because of the fucking little yeah. sounds that I make. It's because when we start the podcast, you have to go like, "Boop." <laughs> so I see. We don't have. Oh, we, I guess we could go like. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, there are a lot of questions about future of the channel, sure. where we're going with this. Mm-hmm. There were like three questions, I think. <laughs> Most of them were like phenomenal. Three more than zero. Yeah. yeah. Most of them were phenomenal. Like, thank you so much, you guys, for all the support. Mm-hmm. The reaction was better than I expected. Mm-hmm. Um, all the comments about so happy you're back. Some guy was like, this made my shitty day better. That, I love that. So do you think you'll ever bring your old style of videos back? I'm going to say yes mm-hmm. in the future. Um, the only problem right now is I'm trying to work at the NHL to see what we can do with the copyright. So I talked to this YouTuber called The Exchanged. Mm-hmm. And pretty much he does like historical like diversity hockey videos. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very analytical and stuff. And we're just talking about like it would be so great if all the hockey YouTubers could use co- like Ugh. free footage. Literally. We would be like 10 times like at least bigger. And imagine all these content creators creating, like the, the league would grow. Oh, yeah. It would inevitably grow. Yeah, it would definitely grow. But we can't do that right now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think for now, we're going to try and do that, but also incorporate a lot of other things. Mm-hmm. Like we already have some gaming footage that we recorded. <laughs> that Chris low-key <laughs> cheated. No, 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 no. Listen, at the end of the day, the series reads three two for the winner, and the winner was me. So that's all that that's all that anyone really needs to know. But please continue. This is a different style of videos that people are used to, but we want to plant a bunch of different seeds Absolutely. and grow everything. Absolutely. And ho- hopefully, we can get we can get big enough to get endorsements where copyright issues won't matter mm-hmm. and then we can really produce the content that yeah. we really want to anything produce. that we want and yeah. just ignore the copyright yeah like i would say the best way to describe this would be like this podcast is just like who we are as people yeah hockey is a large part of our lives the fandom of hockey but yeah. there's so much more to life than that as well and obviously we're here to provide fun you know fun things like what i personally enjoyed a lot about your videos is the fact that you brought a different side you know, a, a different perspective to all mm-hmm. of these hockey things yeah. that happened, right? And yeah. you present it in a super fun way. Yeah. I'd love to bring those kinds of things into the podcast. I'd love to talk about yeah. cool stories. I would love to bring footage into the podcast. 100%. Like, for me, um, I'm not a big fan of the visuals that we had for the last video. Well, so there was none. <laughs> <laughs> there, was the, there was none. Yeah, but. so our plan is to go use a camera yeah. in the next coming episodes Yeah. and be all in Yeah. because... I feel like I have a big responsibility for everyone that has waited and showed the support mm-hmm. all these years mm-hmm. to give them the best content possible. So we're thinking of a lot of things. We're always brainstorming. Gaming is definitely coming. Um, we talked about vlogging. Mm-hmm. It would be interesting to do like actual challenges, like oh, go to backcountry camping with just a vegetable or something. <laughs> oh, that, those kinds of challenges. Like, like, surviving kind of, in a forest. Yeah, or, yeah. You know. Oh, I would love to do <laughs> like just things like that, right? So this kind of podcast style, we're not just doing the podcast. Mm-hmm. We wanted to do a bunch of stuff and bring a lot of creativity into the channel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because Hockey of, and otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Because unfortunately right now, we are res- very restricted by the NHL. And that's the thing too, right? It's like if we want to produce the content you know, that Nick used to produce like four or five years ago, it's like it... It requires a lot of okay. It requires a lot of like barriers to go through in terms of licensing and getting all these videos yeah. and all, everything, right? But if those avenues were open, I don't think there's a doubt that we'd be producing those videos. Oh, like, I definitely. Think, I would love to. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like I that. Actually, like, I might have not graduated from university. <laughs> <laughs> it, honestly, if, if, the, if, if that path would have continued, I'd yeah. See, yeah, why would you have? Yeah, right? everyone would have been happy. I would have been happy. The viewers would have been happy. But there was... I, there was a video with the there was a video with the Eric Carlson like top 5 It was another injuries video. Okay. Injuries videos do well. Yeah. <laughs> People love those. Yeah. yeah. So there was a video, there's two videos. I think they both have maybe 3 million yeah. each. Yeah, wow. Plus, but I didn't get a I probably got like max $10. Right. Cuz the 3 million video like 6 I have 15 point one million or something total videos sorry 
I have 15.1 total views, You're right? right? I pretty much didn't get any money from that. The NHL took everything. So I'm like a worker for the NHL, but I don't get paid. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you're one of those migrant workers that's <laughs> just getting paid cents on the... No, but it, it's tough, right? Pretty much, because yeah. It, you don't... It, it, we, we don't want to sit here and be like, oh, like everything's for money, everything's for money. But, but the thing is, like the work to pay out ratio has to somewhat be reasonable for mm-hmm. any content to be produced right like mm-hmm. especially when you're trying to balance the full-time job and all these other yeah. responsibilities that you have so yeah for sure <sighs> i mean yeah I, ideal scenario would be like i we would be both producing 100 the old formats right but we're trying to get there yeah i think that's our ultimate goal absolutely and to get there we need to grow a bunch of different seeds mm-hmm. and then grow a nice forest a nice garden yeah beautiful a nice garden, garden? yeah, yeah. What do you want in the garden? Uh, just a nice, you know, a nice, we need a nice, I think this podcast is the nice firm walnut tree right in the middle, you know, just, <laughs> just nice and firm and strong, you know, like a, like a big, thick walnut tree, it's just thick it's the center of the garden. And now we, now we got nice little like, you know, blueberries and like cherries <laughs> and like, you know, like nice little, so nice flowers, yeah, nice little rose petal kind of, you know, like, yeah, things like that. But again, we're very open to anything. So mm-hmm. if any of you guys have more suggestions, we're definitely going to look at them and brainstorm and really think about it because we really appreciate everyone's time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And like, like we, I mean, we both talked about this too. Like, you know, asking someone to sit down and listen to two hours mm-hmm. of content, it's, it's a big ask. Mm-hmm. And like, we understand like not everyone's going to do that. Yeah. Um, but you know, just, just know that this isn't it. The podcast isn't the only thing that no, we're doing. Definitely right? not. And I don't want it to be it. Exactly. I so. feel like I have a response responsibility to not, be only a podcast right. channel yeah because we're more than that too right yeah well i am i don't know <laughs> <laughs> wait for me baby wait we should talk about you never really introduced yourself oh yeah yeah, yeah people yeah, don't even know your name that's right uh, you know that's I'm, one thing i'm really bad at yeah but uh well my name's chris my yeah name's chris just to start off um chris we've been friends for like probably we're pushing 20 years right Jesus, we've been friends yeah. since like oh, grade how old we are six now. five-ish mm-hmm. not 20 years so Thank God. <laughs> Pushing 20 years. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, we've known each other for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I kind of mentioned it in the last podcast. Grew up, you know, obviously yeah. playing like hockey outside. He likes Donald Trump. Ah, uh, debatable on that one, he, I think. He's on Eric Stahl's side. Uh, listen, <laughs> I think as you more and more listen to this, you'll see which side, <laughs> which which one of us is on which side. No, <laughs> hey, hey now. I'm not Eric Stahl's um, side. But yeah, no, name's Chris. Yeah, I guess I really never did say that. It's kind of awkward to say that, though. It is. Uh, tell us your uh, fun fact. Uh, oh, yeah. It's literally the lame. And now that people are going to hear this, they're going to be like, oh, that was what you were fucking talking about last week. No, I was. Uh, well, but here's the thing, though. The only reason it's a fun fact, though, is because ethnically presenting as a Korean man. A right? visible minority. A vis- uh, even though I'm a visible minority. No, um, I was born in the great state of Florida in a, in a small town uh, it's a of, great state. Uh, of Tampa Bay. Oh, the great state, the great red. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm I kidding. told you this guy's a shock. <laughs> no, but I was born in Florida. No one can ever guess it. I literally one of the things I do at the bar all the time is get the regulars to guess where I'm born. And if they guess it, I'll give them a shot. But if they Actually? don't, they owe me five bucks. What? <laughs> no, <laughs> they never. I never end up taking the money. But um, it's always a fun little game I play. But yeah, that's a little yeah. fun fact. He's a Florida man. I'm a Florida man. That's why I'm so smart. That's why you are the way you are. <laughs> no. So when did you move to Canada then? Um. Oh, it was forever ago. Actually, Honestly, I'd say I grew up in Canada. So like, oh, like grade one, right? No, even younger. So I left Florida, I think, when I was two and a half, three. So I barely like, don't even, I don't remember anything. Yeah. And then we moved to LA for a couple of years. Right. And then we moved to Canada. Yeah. So like five, maybe kindergarten. So I went to kindergarten mm-hmm. in uh, Canada. Right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we asked people to bring in some questions, audio questions. Yes. Yeah. And we have one. I mean, I'm surprised people, you know, some, some people even <laughs> yes, like, people guys, emailed. audio question, yeah. <laughs> not emails. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I mean, you, yeah, let's you play I mean? it. Yeah, let's we'll play. play it in the podcast. So this is from iGen or something. Yeah, iGen. I'll, I'll save. I'll save the full title. We'll just do a part of the oh, title just to save. It's that. not as. It's not even his real name. Okay, well then, fine. Sent from iGen Terrazono. <laughs> Terrazono. <laughs> I really hope I said that. I really hope I said that correctly. What is a Terrazono? Uh, it's a very cool name, but he says... Thoughts on the Lightning and the Knights exceeding the cap space once the playoffs starts. 
Oh, once the, okay. I, so I, if I if I heard it correctly, he was talking about the Lightning and the Vegas Golden Knights both exceeding the cap here before the playoffs. You know, the, the whole cap circumvention thing that goes on the, over there. Um, yeah, I mean, very interesting question. I mean, to me, I'm mixed feelings about it. But for me personally, I think that if you have a set of rules that are laid out, right, no matter what those quote-unquote savvy business professionals are always going to find loopholes like mm-hmm. that, that it's it's inevitable you're going to lay out any sort of rules there's yeah. always going to be loopholes that are found sure those those that don't know those loopholes could be like hey those guys are cheating or those guys are doing whatever but like within the set of rules are they technically cheating i don't like it's easy to look down on them but i think it's a smart savvy business move <laughs> you business snake <laughs> i'm a no. capitalist for you <laughs> <laughs> um no i honestly I respect it. Yeah. I wish the Canucks GM would do that. But it is snaky. But that's not even the GM's fault. That's the NHL's fault. Yeah. They made the hole. Um, no, I think it's great. I think um, it adds a lot of flavor to the playoffs. Right. The only thing that bothers me is I remember Kobe said that every he would show up to every single game, try his hardest because he knows a fan would spell it and spend like $600, come to LA, right. buy the tickets just to see him play, right? Right. But when you come to like, when you go to like, um, you're a big Lightnings fan, go see Kucherov and he's injured. It's like kind of turning into like a Kevin Durant NBA season mm. where he like, oh, I'm going to rest six months and yeah. come back for the playoffs. Load management. So I feel like load management should be regulated. Yeah. Like you can't do that. Yeah. But as long as it's fair in the rules, then you should. Definitely. Like you can't fake an injury just to fake an injury. Right. But what what about those cases like if I if I'm if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure he's referencing back when like Kucherov was on that like long, you know, quote unquote <laughs> long magically, injury. He right? comes back exactly. for the playoffs. and tears it up and absolutely tears it up. Actually t- yeah. And, you know, but like I guarantee off. you, like, yeah, he might have been injured at the beginning, but like yeah. he was probably recovered a couple months before yeah. the season you know, the, yeah. the playoffs started. What do you think about that? So isn't he faking an injury there for those last two months? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, on, honestly, <laughs> I don't know. You are right, though. I totally wish the Canucks would do something like that. Just because, like I said, I mean, they're not technically... They're technically cheating, but they're not. You know what else I respect about the Lightning? Hmm. Even though they didn't have their top star, they were still, like, top three in their own division. So... The team was already just... Yeah. But it's, like, it's a little unfortunate. I I would wish that they would get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Just because I'm a fan and I don't work for the NHL... No, actually, no, never mind. If the Canucks had the opportunity to do that, <laughs> <laughs> if Feedy had, like, a big injury and he wants to come back for the playoffs, then I'll be it. Yeah, right. Well, here's the thing, yeah. And so, I mean, Pete, Pete's contract isn't that crazy right now. But, like, say we did have a huge contract that was on LTIR. Isn't that how it works? Then you have that cap space to, quote-unquote, yeah. fill it up with, with other stars. And then, yeah. oh, he magically comes back. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. man. Like, I understand the frustration from teams that, don't have that going on for them for sure it's like <clears throat> it's how like wealthy people kind of try their best to not pay tax as much as possible oh god seriously yeah and yeah what, what do you think about that do you respect it or what it's kind of the same it, lo- it is the same the loophole but it's all under the law it's exactly the same right and and that's kind of the frustration too is because I would then be the perspective of those lower income franchises, if that's the right word, like less valued franchises that don't have that, that don't have that kind of capital to do or, or that kind of power to do those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, I could just be screaming down, hey, but the thing is, hey, <laughs> if I was the Lightning, if I was the Vegas, if I was part of the organization, yeah. I would turn a blind eye. Like to me, like I wouldn't then just be like, oh, we're still what we're doing is wrong. I'd be like, wow, look at us go. Like, look at us being smart. So mm-hmm. if I'm a wealthy businessman, yeah. maybe this just shows my conceit in this. I don't know. But like if I had a loophole that oh, see, that sounds awful. I was gonna say if I had a loophole where I didn't have to pay like ten million dollars in tax if I was like a fucking millionaire, yeah. Why would I not do that? Yeah, no, that's fair. It's a selfish perspective, but Yeah, like most wealthy people will have people to take care of other businesses so now this sounds bad but they do have other obligations elsewhere for sure hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so let's, let's say you have 
three businesses, right? And let's say you have three hundred million dollars. Mm-hmm. You have what? How many employees do you have? A oh, thousand, maybe. Sure, yeah. And then how many dads and moms? There's a thousand, right? Okay. How many people are you really taking care of? Right. Like they have children. They have their grandmother, their parents, right? All those workers. So how many people are you really taking care of? Okay. So if you if you're getting stripped of all your wealth, you have to fire people, right? Mm, so who's really getting hurt in the end? Yeah, mm. that's kind of what I think of it. I definitely love that perspective. That's definitely like that's, far, far thinking. That's the business snake perspective. That's what I'm saying. That's because for me, because like I would only see that first layer of like, yeah. well, fuck this rich person for like they they don't need ten million dollars. They already have a billion. Like fucking fuck them. But like, yeah, I mean that's fair too because a lot of billionaires they don't necessarily they have a lot of cash, but they try to like you know it's your money, so you try to pay less. Of course, but it's also fair as well because you're paying the government. But maybe you don't agree with how the government's pay, like spending their money, mm-hmm. right? Maybe they're spending it on I don't know. What's a stupid? What, what's a, what's a stupid government spending? Maybe they spent it on a statue of <laughs> hot dogs. Well, they were painting the the sidewalks with the pride colors. <laughs> you know? Like that's a lot of money. Like that's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> that could be an example. After, after last no, that session. costs like millions of dollars, really. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So maybe you don't like the way Canada's spending on their healthcare, right? right? Why? Where is that money going? Yeah. Maybe you don't like the way Canada's not building enough housing. Sure. That could be a lot of. Re- there could be a lot of reasons why you don't pay tax. And like billionaires, yeah, they have billions of dollars too, but they also get taxed the most. Oh yeah. Like the hockey players, they'll get paid, get paid like what? AHLer. Philip Zinel Zidine will get paid like eight hundred thousand dollars. Hey, free agent now. Yeah. <laughs> Hughes is right after. <laughs> um but how much tax is he paying? He's probably paying like paying like more than half. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. So we're not paying half of our income. No. But they are, but they have a lot of money as well. It's a it's a tricky little s- slope. I mentioned this last week too though, but it's like when you're rich like that. One percent's a lot of money. Like, like, like. Oh, but what? If 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 you're rich like that, <clears throat> like, right? Say you have like a million dollars. Yeah. Like one percent to my income and one percent to your income is vastly different. Yeah, right? for so sure. It's like for sure. Each percentage that keeps going up in terms of the taxes, yeah. like, it gets compounded that yeah. much more, right? Yeah. Maybe I'm paying like twenty thousand dollars of tax per year, but they're gonna pay like five three hundred fifty thousand. <laughs> But it's just different different perspective. Like mm-hmm. I think if everyone was in the shoes of a billionaire, I think everyone would try to pay less yeah. tax as possible. Same thing with the lightning fan. If you're a lightning fan, it's great for you. If you're against the lightning team, it sucks to be you, but that's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if you wanna if you wanna answer your questions, send them to CanadianJock96 at gmail.com. And send us an audio form so that we can put your audio in the podcast. Mm-hmm. I think that's really fun. And it can be any questions about hockey, lifestyle, maybe your girlfriend. Because <laughs> we're experts. Oh, we're experts. We're, we're experts in maybe that you're having field. money troubles. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm an expert in that field. Um, something personal about your life that maybe you want, I want to say advice, but like a perspective. Mm. If you want. But and also if you don't want, if you don't want us to uh, say your name, that just put that in the email and that's totally cool. Yeah. Yep. Wait, take it back two seconds though. We were talking about Philip Zina. Did you hear about that? Uh, what's going on with him? Did you? Yeah, I just kind of read like a little thing about it it's, yesterday, but I know briefly like he had what a three point something million dollar contract for a few years, like maybe two or three. Yeah. But he got waived because Eisenman was like, well. If you're earning this money, you got to play like mm-hmm. it. But Zadina wasn't, right? Mm-hmm. So he got waived. No one picked him up. And then they both mutually agreed to terminate the contract, which is basically Zadina saying, you know what? I'm going to play right. for a million dollars somewhere. And then in three years, I'm going to get six million. Right, right. It's a big risk. It's a huge risk. I don't think I would take that kind of was, risk. Yeah. Well, that's funny that you go there. I, I was going to ask you that. Yeah, I wouldn't take that risk. See, but uh, one thing that would change the question for me, though, so if he was then playing in the AHL, he's not getting paid his NHL contract now, right? It'd be a different no. sum of money, right? No, I think... So I think what he's looking for is opportunity. Right. Maybe he just didn't have that in Detroit, but a lot of people say, like, oh, if you're not given the opportunity, 
then you're not going to succeed. Mm. I somewhat agree with that, but I think overall, if you're meant to succeed, <laughs> you're going to succeed. I yeah. think you're going to find the opportunity. Well, dude, Zadina was crazy too because going into that draft, man, he was like a top three pick. Like you they, wanted Zadina. You wanted like, the Canucks to draft I wanted Zidina. him so bad, but they want like they literally. He was like touted as a top three pick, uh, pick just scoring lightning, qu- a quick shot, just yeah. a fast winger, strong. <laughs> like it was all meant to be. Yeah. I haven't I, I'll be honest I haven't really followed him through his Detroit days but like I obviously something has not clicked and mm-hmm. and it's a big ask to now bet on yourself after already kind of having failed if that's the wrong you know it's the wrong way yeah. to say but he was given an opportunity he's played over 100 games in the NHL right yeah and then I think he played first line minutes as well uh, for a few times granted the team wasn't yeah it's, it's true but I don't know don't you feel like if you are really meant to succeed then you're gonna make a path for yourself to succeed even mm-hmm. though you're not getting chances from the coaches but you'd still shine in the in the shit you would sh- exactly you yeah. would shine somehow yeah you would maybe it's the attitude like for me i was always the bench warmer in basketball <laughs> in high school but i always found a way to be like climb up the rankings mm-hmm. i yeah. fucking worked my Suck ass up to off. the coaches <laughs> <laughs> you gotta hey you gotta do what you gotta do <laughs> But I don't know. I see a lot of that, like Capo, Capo Caco, mm, like Lafreniere. Yeah, what's going on with him? What's going on with Lafreniere? Like, dude, Lafreniere was supposed to be the <laughs> next big thing, dude. I remember like, he was the next uh, Sidney Crosby. What draft was that? 20... Uh, I don't know. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 yeah, I don't know. Something like that. Who else was in his draft? Wasn't it Lafreniere and Caco were literally one, two? No. No. But anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> that shows why fucking yeah, Laffy Taffy. Yeah, I don't know. People oh, say Jack like, Hughes and Kako. Sorry, that was the one. Yeah, too. yeah, that was yeah. the one too. I don't know. People say like Rangers are bad at developing pro- developing prospects. Maybe that's the case, or maybe I don't know. Well, th- would they have struck out twice? Like, I mean, maybe it is. Maybe it's maybe it's like you know both like. Both players probably needed, to, even though like I felt like Lafreniere, they were saying like he didn't even need polishing, like he was like an NHL ready player. <laughs> they were also saying that about Kako too. Like, also saying that about Bedard. Yeah, well, they also said that about Jake Vertanen. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yo, uh, don't talk about Vertanen. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know, man. But okay, but put that scenario then. So you would just take that three three million dollar, four million dollar deal, ride it out, and have that kind of wealth in your in your family at least. And then whatever AHL contract you sign afterwards or whatever, you go with that. Like you'd be willing to do that versus. That's it's tricky because let's say that contract is up, right? Right. You need to prove yourself to be more than three point one two five million dollars. And how do you prove that when you're? Well, number one in my head would be do well in the playoffs, right? Which is uh, not going to happen. <laughs> not going to happen in Detroit. <laughs> so you just have to produce on the top line. Yeah. But when you produce on the top line, but it's a shitty team, like people, the other teams really respect you for that. For sure, right? But he's not getting the opportunity. Maybe he's just not good as he thinks he is. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's cool to see the confidence. Like I respect him, man. Like that's the competitive fire that you almost want in your athlete, right? Being like, hey, like give me the puck. I'm gonna score. I'm gonna make money. Like that's great. But you cool. gotta channel that competitiveness into your into actual play. And then, well, before the play, like training, uh, skating, yeah. edge work, yeah. strength, skills. Well, I'm thankful that Detroit took him. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's all we're gonna end that on. But yeah, Phil yeah. Zina. I mean, I hope. I, I honestly hope it works out for him. I don't know where he's gonna end up, but a team yeah. that needs a winger reminds me of like Neil uh, Yakupov. Mm-hmm. He was supposed to be the next Ovechkin. He had the speed. He had the skill. He had the celebrations. He was really touted, yeah, coming out yeah. of Sarnia, was it? I think it came out of? Yeah. I don't know. Just some players just... It just... They lose it, I guess, you know? I wonder why, though. Why are they, like, like laughing, right? They're, he's, like... He was, like, the next Sidney Crosby. Right. Why is he, like, struggling so much? And maybe hockey pro- players are a lot more private, but, like, you, do you know, like, the Johnny Manziel story, right? Like, he was, no. like... It, he was a huge football college football player coming out of like he was literally named Johnny Football like that was like his thing right I've heard of him. right and yeah. he was huge like literally got drafted by the Browns and it was just but the thing is with him it's a little different because even during his college days and even during like his early NFL days he was known as a partier like he was known mm-hmm. to kind of have that attitude like yeah. all this kind of shit so you kind of saw the demise coming I guess yeah 
Um, but like with these players, like I, I at least don't hear anything about them. Like you know, like yeah, being too. <laughs> yeah, hockey is way too restricted. It's way you know too restricted. When Sidney Crosby first joined the Pittsburgh Penguins, Mario Lemieux invited Crosby to live within in okay. his house. Yeah, just so you know, like keep an eye. The, uh, pretty, yeah, it's kind of that protection. But yeah, maybe that's the thing. Maybe they play too many video games, mm. like Line A. Maybe they have injuries. Yeah. Maybe they like doing the cocaine. Maybe they like to drink. Maybe they're uh, they got injured once and then now they're addicted to people. Like painkillers. In, yeah, painkillers. Like you see in the hockey, but in the U.S., like the doctors will give you painkillers for your injury. Yeah, they'll have like a little, a small like maybe broken bone. It hurts, but they get the doctors will get paid from the pharmaceutical companies to to just pump you up with it. Exactly, and you'll get addicted. Mm. And we see a lot of NHL like Derek Bougard got addicted to painkillers rick ripon got addicted yeah. to pain. maybe it's that we have no idea mm-hmm. carry price he was under the program mm-hmm. the uh, substance program mm-hmm. i don't know if it's like alcohol but who knows what's going on behind the doors but i don't know that video game comment's really interesting too though because um which video like no well, the video game comment just in general about how they're playing a lot because oh, yeah. like i saw this literally like today i was saying this thing uh demar DeRozan was on this podcast yeah and they were talking about like how um like 50 percent of the nba players don't even love the game of basketball like because <laughs> really? like, you think back to like the kobe bryant stories right yeah. in the gym 3 a.m fucking like yeah however many shots so your fingers are bleeding yeah. like literally all these different things like demar was just saying like nowadays like people play like video games longer than they practice oh wow. like you know like so it's already like yeah and you know, on one hand, like some people are going to be like, "Hey, work-life balance. You need the old, but like, if you want to be successful, you have to be a like psychopath. You have to be a, have to be a fucking psycho, yeah. like a freak. Yeah, obsessed. In the Team USA basketball team in 2008, Kobe would start training like from 4 a.m. and then LeBron would come down at like 7 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> like, the fuck yeah. is this? Kid? Yeah. But that's like Kobe was so his work work ethic was so up there. Like even the superstars in the NBA was like, wow, Respected. this guy's it different i can't remember who it was but there was there was one player um who was telling a kobe story about how yeah like kobe was in the gym and he got there and he was like and like kobe had been there for hours yeah, since yeah. he had gone there right <laughs> he started shooting and shooting and shooting and he was like when's this guy gonna leave when's this gonna leave he kept shooting he kept shooting and finally he's like i'm done i'm wrapping up go over to finish <laughs> and like that mentality bro yeah you're yeah. crazy yeah but that's what made like, him different bro. right the competitiveness is outside the, his actual playing game yeah right? oh yeah that's what i that's what i mean about like Zadina, like Yakupov, maybe they didn't have that drive. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But I remember um apparently there was this practice with Kobe with a with a player. Mm. And then I forgot the player, but he was like, Man, he's missing all these shots. Like, Kobe's not very good today. Like, what the, what's going on, right? He's yeah. the black mamba. Yeah. But apparently he's been like training for like ten hours <laughs> before he came in. <laughs> yeah. No, that guy's like three hours of sleep or something Different. every night. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, his master of the craft yeah. that's what i believe in though like if you're meant to be successful you'll have that drive yeah and then i think even though you're not getting opportunities i could think you can always work your way up because yeah. zadina was drafted sixth overall i think Seven, yeah six sorry because yeah yeah six right so and steve irisman like if he doesn't work out that looks bad on him mm-hmm. so they want him to succeed right they're not against him they're not like oh you didn't you didn't you missed this shot you didn't pass you didn't follow this right. coach or we're going to bench you. No, like that's going to look bad on everyone. Mm-hmm. The coaches, if the Sedina doesn't succeed, then the coaches are going to get mm-hmm. fired, right? So they want them to succeed. Mm-hmm. But maybe he's just not there. Maybe his work ethic is not there. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you do you believe in that? If a player is meant to be successful, it'll be successful? No, hun- yes. Like I, Martin I, St. Louis. Yeah. No, I think that mentality is, it's, it's almost like, you know how people automatically think like when you work out, like when you get abs, for example, you got it because you worked out, but it's like like ninety percent of your abs is your nutrition. Okay. It's kind of like that same thing with the hockey player, right? It's like you see all these physical attributes, you see all this skill, but like yeah. I think like the majority of a, of the success of a hockey player is the mentality, yeah. right? It's that des- the dedication to wake up every single morning, yeah. to stay late for film study, whatever. Yeah. All these different eat healthy, things. like no eat carb, healthy, yeah. Nathan McKinnon, sure, oh, yeah. Dinner and even when you go party, it's like you do it in moderation or yeah. you do it on the off seasons or yeah. you know what I mean? Like you really prioritize your work yeah. when you're working. Exactly. And these are like, and you're like actual profession. I think yeah. that they call it, that's why they call it a professional athlete. Right. Right. Cause your whole life 
is dedicated to your craft. It's not like we're fucking playing beer league hockey every <laughs> yeah. Sunday. Like literally. Yeah, beer league hockey. People are only competitive during when they play. <laughs> they have, yeah. But anyways, um, people say like, oh, if you get rid of a younger player's confidence away, then maybe they won't get it back. Right. That's true. But also it's true that if you are born to be a superstar, yeah. if your DNA has a superstar DNA, you make your own confidence, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So that's what I. That's why I kind of believe in this. And you just have to make a path for yourself. Yeah, bite. And it has to be a drive where it's not just in front of people. It has to be like uh, when you're alone too. Because yeah, yeah. I feel like Yakupov really had that drive. Yeah. The way he scored that goal against LA, <laughs> and then went on his knees to uh, like sliding I down center it. ice, just cheering, even though it was like a tying goal. <laughs> but that is honestly one of the coolest celebrations I've ever seen mm-hmm. in my life. Right. Mm-hmm. He had that drive. He had that passion, but I don't know. Maybe he just lacked other things like mm-hmm. working off ice. Right. Yeah, no. It's it's true, the man. Motivation and drive to work off ice. Because I think Bo Horvat definitely had that. Yeah. yeah. He trained a lot to like work on his skating and stuff. But yeah, um, I guess it comes down to you either have it or you don't. Or if you don't have it, you can make a path for yourself. But it's very hard, hard to motivate yourself too. And yeah. also a thing, like even like you and me, yeah. we struggle a lot with like motivating ourselves, mm-hmm. like the passion, the drive. Yeah, it's like uh, you got you got to regulate it, right? It's tough. It's definitely that's why I personally respect Kobe so much, mm-hmm. because he just he is the ideal person, right? To look up to. Well, to, to, in like, the athletic sense. To, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, some allegations there. So, in the athletic yeah, sense. in the athletic sense, yeah. It makes me really think on a much, much, much sc- smaller scale, obviously. But like, even when we like reflect back to like you know high school sports and stuff like that, which is basically when I was most athletic, I'd mm-hmm. probably say right. And everyone, yeah, right. Probably. But it's like it's like it's different because I always used to say, man. I, I, I'm so like motivated. I'm so passionate because I would work, you know, I had three gym, cl- like I would work out in the morning, work out in the afternoon, work out after school, have gym, you know, rugby practice, all these different things. But it was all because like the structure almost presented those things to me. Once I was placed into a position, like I graduated, I had to like start working out on my own, only went to practice only like twice a week for rugby. Like my fitness really started to deteriorate because I didn't have that self motivation to now carry yeah. myself out to the gym every morning yeah. and it do has all these to be different constant. things. Constant, yeah. It's a difference. It has to be like every single day, it's especially for an athlete. Yeah, right. And like, if you skip a day, or maybe it, it could be a rest day, but you're just so competitive, yeah. right? NHL sports oh. in general. So I saw this great quote once, and it was like, "Regular people practice until they can get a skill done once." Yeah. Right. But then professionals practice until they like don't get it wrong now basically like that so like a simple pass or like or maybe bouncing this you know the puck on your stick 10 times like we're going to keep practicing that until we get to 10 times Mm -hmm. but they're going to practice until they get to 10 times forever like you know what i mean like it's just like the 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 mentality the perspective of it is just i'll give you a better quote okay please (laughs) (laughs) please show me a better quote so this is what bruce lee said okay um i fear a man that practices his kick once a day than a man that practices it a thousand times is that the right quote? It's along the lines. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Telling me I'm butchering the quote. Hey, that's, I get the message. I got like 98% I get right. the message. But yeah, so you're basically saying like develop one skill really, really well. No, it's a guy that practices every day that he fears. The consistency, the consistency. over. Oh, oh, one over, kick every single day. That's oh, what he fears. Over a thousand of. times in one session, but yeah, then being yeah. done with it. Yeah. I see what you mean. I yeah. see what you mean. Wow, we took a long time to get to the end of that quote. <laughs> no, but so, that's, yeah, it's um, true. That's a good point. It's always weird, like for me, like criticizing athletes, though. Oh yeah, because who are we? <laughs> We're fucking. Yeah. Have you you know Star Wars? Yeah, oh, I awesome. Shame. We're me, like a but... okay. We're like a big slime. Like, <laughs> Job of the hub. Just like. Just like barely can get out of chair, <laughs> you know. Compared to the like Philip Zadina, right? Who's probably like top three hundred in the world, yeah. right? Yeah. Imagine yeah. being top three hundred in anything. That that's a successful life. Think of how gassed we get, like playing like on that three on three rink, like on the little half. Like we're, st- <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. You just talking about it makes me gas. <laughs> like I need like air right now. Yeah. So, 
Let's just end it on that. We love you, Philip. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> Please come on the ball. No. <laughs> hey, and, and and if we if the Canucks needed wingers, I'd be very happy to have you on the team. But apparently, like, we just have too many. We have too many. Do we have too many of those kinds of players? You know, first round picks that have just like not really panned out. Oh, um, speaking of the Canucks, someone in the comments were like, "Can you talk about the boost food row?" Oh yeah. The well, whole I didn't see that. Oh, just the, oh, the situation in general. Yeah. Well, I mean, very sad. I think just like, <laughs> like it just. But to be honest with you, as a Nux fan, it's just a par. It's just what is it? Par for the course? Is that what they say? Just like, it's very normal. We're an awful franchise, bro. Like, <laughs> it's an embarrassing franchise to be a fan uh... of. Bruce Boudreau, dude, and I'm also like a kind of a Caps fan, right? Like I, I grew up oh, like, yeah, oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. so like I loved Bruce. Like it was just like he's such a special like. He's a players coach. He's a players yeah. coach. He's a fans coach. He's a yeah. he's just a good coach. Do you remember that 24? Uh, that, that's exactly series? what I'm talking about. It was yeah. like there was so many good moments. I remember him like walking to the mall with like the ice cream bar. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like shit like, like that. never too late for ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> And you're telling me that we were just like announcing that he's gonna get fired, like, like get the like, what? What exactly yeah. did I don't even know? To be honest with you, I like to blank a lot of stuff from the Canucks <laughs> out, especially in more recent history. Oh man, because it's just too painful. So but what exactly happened with that? What happened was Canucks were shit. No, no. So Jim Benning hired Bruce. Bruce, there it is. Oh my. Bruce, so, there okay, it is. For all the Canucks fans out there. Canucks are like shit, right? After the COVID playoffs, they're mm. shit. But then Bruce came in, everything was so fresh. Mm. Canucks are good. The boys are vibing. Yeah. We're winning games. Yeah. Like we were like top like eight in the NHL when he was here. So we had a lot of hope. I had I, like I haven't felt a hope in like that in years, right? The next season, I don't know who the fuck knows what happened. <laughs> and we lose all the games, and he gets canned before he gets canned. Mm-hmm. So it's like your boss saying. Um, telling other employees, hey, um, yeah, we're, we have a re- replacement for Chris. Right. So hopefully soon. Yeah. It's like training your replacement. But he says that in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So they're like, what the fuck? Yeah. That's pretty much what happened, which is kind of unprofessional, but I wonder why they did, they did that. There must well, be a reason. There's, was it leaked? It wasn't like they announced it. I don't like it when people are like... No, oh, they're, they're just stupid. You know, no, we, right. There's always, there's always a, reason. a reason. No, Maybe, but like, I, I, what I'm confused is, it, was it a leak or was it like... I think mean, it was that, a press conference. I can't remember. There's no way Aquilini was just like, oh, by the way, yeah. I think it was uh, Rutherford. Oh, like, I don't, we, I'm not 100% yeah, Aquilini sure. Aquilini wouldn't say anything, of course. Yeah. Rutherford. But, 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 you're saying that he was basically just like, oh, like we're looking for a new coach, basically. Or maybe it was a leak. I can't remember. But I remember... Rutherford apologized, mm, right? Yeah. So he must have done something. All I got to say is when I saw him, like, everyone was cheering. He was, like, crying on the bench and all that shit. And I was just like, dude, we're awful. I went to, like... We're the worst. Yeah. I went to, like, the third game of Bruce Boudreaux. Okay. And then we won in a shootout. I was in the lower bowl. Mm. And it was such an amazing game. Mm. Like, the fans in Vancouver... When we're actually good, this is so amazing Different. in the arena. Yeah, it's just it's weird. Like when Bruce was here in the beginning, it was like cr- it was like a playoff atmosphere, <sighs> right? And then at the end of Bruce, we we went to one of the games. Oh, and it was just atrocious. Like six, we literally left like after the seven, second period. I've never left a hockey game. Yeah, because it's like waste of money. Yeah, and it's like your Canucks. Yeah, but they weren't even trying. No. Like they're just floating around. No, so we left like what beginning of third period i think it was five nothing when we left and they ended up scoring a goal like connect scored a goal and yeah we saw it as we were walking by the boston pizza <laughs> we saw it on the screen we're like oh nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah man um yeah in the 24 7 series i think he was like i've never seen so many fucking players so down on their oh uh, yeah 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 <laughs> i do remember, yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> if something's not working make it fucking work <laughs> I wonder if he saw a sorry or group when he walked into the Canucks locker room. Yeah. I remember um, he benched Ovechkin once like mm. before he got fired in Washington. It was like extra attacker and Ovechkin got benched, right? Mm. And then Ovechkin was like, fucking fat fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know? And I don't remember. Yeah, there's like, like fat so fuck. so funny. Bruce is I a like, little tubby, but... <laughs> He's so cute. He is. Yeah, he's a, it's him. like a lovable grandpa. I do love uh, him. Yeah. Have you heard about the submarine that sank? 
uh, um, yes, I did actually. So a on couple the couple s- weeks back. So when they're searching for the submarine, there was actually another big story. Hmm. Three hundred fifty people died in the Mediterranean Ocean. Oh God! Refugees from Pakistan, and it's one of the biggest disasters, dis- like sinking disasters, like casualty wise, right. in the Mediterranean Sea. Have you heard about that? No, I did not. A lot of people haven't heard about that. A lot of people just saw that on Reddit. A lot of people did, but it's not being talked about anywhere in the right, world right. back then. Wow. I thought it was kind of unfortunate. It was during the same time, a couple yeah, of weeks back. Yeah. It's probably like the day after the submarine went missing. Isn't that just so what literally ha- our world? Yeah. It's, it makes you kind of think like, why was that? Right. Like, why six people in a submarine? That chose to go Is down Is it the there. marketing of the billionaire, the Titanic and the oh, irony? for sure. For sure. Yeah. So what happened was 750 people got on board and then it was overcrowded because like they're smuggling in people and stuff. So families that are trying to get away from Pakistan into Greece got like 350 people died. Yeah. It's horrific. Yeah. Apparently there's a big economic crisis in Pakistan right now Mm. where they're trying to give out food because of inflation is really bad there. Mm. So people can't buy food and then people are getting injured while trying to get government food. (sighs) like trying to collect it and pakistan needs to repay a lot of debt which is to china a lot of it's to china but it's because of like they're not investing enough in like youth education Mm. they're spending way too much on military Mm. against like india and apparently the reason why they're missing grains a lot and why that inflated a lot is because they get they used to get a lot of grain from ukraine Uh. so they can't get that anymore yeah wow so that's not really getting talked about is no, it <laughs> not at all not at no all. and like it, it made, me, made me really think right because ukraine <coughs> ukraine's so big it's literally from like vancouver to saskatchewan right right Jesus. so imagine the farmland right. that's all flat imagine how much that produces right all that grain it just got wiped out and people in places like pakistan are getting really hit mm-hmm. the impact of globalization yeah, yeah so it's interesting how putin's decision to invade ukraine wiped out the grain which caused inflation mm-hmm. which caused people to leave their country in a in a boat right and that ended up killing people indirectly jesus so you don't hear about the news no you really don't you know, so you don't hear that about the news yeah it, it's crazy too right because like it's one of those things it, like the number one sh- like it, it, at first it's shocking right because like you hear okay 350 but like i can't even fathom mm-hmm. the size of 350 people because like mm-hmm. you know say i'm at my restaurant tonight right like i'm going to i'm going to work it's gonna be a friday night we're gonna be jam-packed yeah we're probably gonna have 150 160 people there yeah that f- already feels like a huge area of bump and bustling yeah now imagine that times two yeah with children all dead yeah it's awful it's always like, I mean, I really don't want to take it over to here for a second, but it's like when we talk about like the Holocaust and stuff too, yeah. and like, it's like those numbers. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, it's just weird. Cause like last week we mentioned Mr. <laughs> H now this week we're mentioning the Holocaust. <laughs> Every episode, there's some sort of that kind of element. It's just such a, it's probably one of the most horrific things ever done. And it just, it's, it's, it's seared in my brain forever. You're right. And we spent years like I mean listen, I'm not a fucking history buff yeah. lover. Like I'm yeah. really like you you like definitely we talked about this before. You yeah. have more of a passion for it than I do, but I did a, I, my major was in history. Mm-hmm. Like so like I had to fucking read so many different like papers and articles. Yeah, you should have just use chat GPT. I should have. Well, but fucking didn't exist back then, did it? <laughs> so you actually re- had to read everything? I actually had to Could you imagine I had to take handwritten notes? So have you heard about the Armenian genocide? Yeah, like, uh, ongoing right now. No, <laughs> no. Back in the day, oh no, yeah, it was during the, World War One. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I was like, is it happening yet? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad you don't know about it that much because uh. not a lot of people know about it, uh. especially when the Holocaust is right. everyone knows, right? So pretty much six hundred thousand to one point five million died as a genocide. Yeah, who's who? Who was the enforcers? The Ottoman Empire, <coughs> so current day Turkey, but mm-hmm. they deny it. They <laughs> deny that. Of course. Of course, of course yeah. they do. The classic, uh, if you know you committed a crime, you're uh, unless you get invaded. Huh? That's not true. Well, it's like the classic Japan example. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But it's just, uh, it's interesting because, uh, like about the boat, some stories don't get mentioned as much. Because no one cares. Why? It's also. Why like, is it? Why is it that no one <coughs> cares about these things? Number well, one. Okay, I, we shouldn't say people don't care, but it yeah. just. Well, like it doesn't the, get covered. It doesn't well, because the media doesn't care necessarily about it. Like yeah. I, when I hear that story, I my heart breaks for yeah. the fucking 350 lives that are lost yeah. and the thousands more that were impacted by those that were lost. Like yeah. it breaks my heart when I hear about the explosions happening in fucking like like not you even can, in the war zones. But I'm talking like like th- there was one time this dock I can't remember which dock, but somewhere like it absolutely blew oh, up. Oh yeah, right? yeah. Like, I think that was Iran. Right, yeah. Iran, and, and it's just like however many deaths. Like dude, there was huge yeah. earthquakes a couple months ago. Really? Where was it in? Um, catastrophic was it in turkey i think like catastrophic yeah, yeah, earthquakes yeah, yeah, yeah. right like yeah and even that day i was like looking at all the shit i was like holy fuck but what day later i just forgot about it mm-hmm. like it's just like it's tough number one when it's like on the complete other side of the planet right yeah. like even though we and and frankly the only reason i really know about it is because of social media like otherwise i would have i wouldn't have heard about it or mm-hmm. like maybe it would have been like a fucking footnote in a newspaper article or something but so like, why do we hear constant things about the titanic yeah uh, but not the boat is it because for news outlet it's like marketable like for billionaires i think so for sure it's billionaires billionaire in the submarine lost lost titanic, titanic. that they're looking for like it's already key words yeah but also i think it's it's in north america yeah you know what i mean like i'm sure i'm sure if you went to like a turkey newspaper the front page news was the fact that like mm. or maybe not i don't know maybe they're trying to hide the fact that these refugees all died and like whatever like why turkey or the Mediterranean Sea, whoever's oh, yeah, in yeah. that fucking area. We, where did the boat leave? Oh, Pakistan, you're sorry, you were saying Pakistan, right? Is what you're saying? Uh, no, they're Pakistanis. Refugees, refugees right. Yeah. Um, but they got, anyway, whatever new, whatever source that they were coming from or heading to, they probably talked a lot more about it than we heard about it over here. Yeah, I guess maybe we just don't care because we're not, we're, we're not like, we're not affiliated with Pakistan in any way. Right. Maybe that's why. But it's still, that's such a cool thing to say, right? Because like we're still affiliated in a way of humans, but it's just the reality where yeah. you can only really retain, you can only really think about and retain so many things. Yeah. It's just not relatable maybe. Well, yeah. I shouldn't say that, but. See, but like, it's tough because like what about the, the soul fairy? Like the, 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 the with the children yeah, and all yeah. that. Like to us, I, well, even to me, like even <laughs> though having not lived in Korea, but like still being of Korean lineage, it's like, it's really like impactful. Right? It's a na- it was a national tragedy. It's a national tragedy, yeah. but like if you talk to like, you know, like someone that's not affiliated. <laughs> and no one knows that story, eh? Maybe we should talk about it. No, might as well. I mean, you probably know a lot more than I do about it. So but. basically what happened was there was a captain. No, so all these high school grade yeah. nine, ten, eleven yeah. kids were going to like a Hawaii of Korea pretty much. Big field trip. Yeah, big field trip, big island. And during the day the boat capsized so it kind of flipped on its side and the captain was like everyone stay in your ferries stay calm and just sit tight Mm -hmm. so what happened was after the captain said that he announced it and he left the boat but all the children were sitting down in their rooms while the ship is turning around (sighs) and 300 kids drowned to death inside the ship yeah that's crazy (coughs) it's actually fucked and like but as a Korean yourself, yeah, you probably care way more than a person who lives in. Oh Quebec, yeah, right, hundred percent. Right? But my, I guess my, my thing though would be it's it, it it's if they heard that story, if someone from Quebec heard that story, mm-hmm. I would be they would be hurt. Yes. Like, oh, that's awful. But it wouldn't be on their mind all the, or yeah. it wouldn't like it wouldn't be something they reflect back onto. Yeah, I guess it's not relatable. Like, yeah. their lives are just don't have that kind of environment around them. See, it's tough though, right? Because like, I, it's just that example specifically though. I remember like this one video I was watching which was like a compilation of all like the, the students like last messages to their parents and yeah, like, the yeah. last phone calls. And yeah. Boy, dude, like I, I, ain't, I ain't about to tear up here but like yeah. it was some heavy if, stuff. If man. anyone's interested, um, there's YouTube videos of kids before they died. So it's really sad because some kids are like crying. They're like, I miss my parents. Right. And their friends are laughing at them while the ship is like turning around. Cause like when you're in high school, you're like, <laughs> whatever. Like right. nothing's obviously who's going to imagine that tragedy yeah. is going to happen. Well, the captain right? said we can just stay here. Exactly. Like, we're we're going to be fine. Exactly. So there's a lot of texts, videos of kids just fooling around 
while the ship is slowly capsizing. And when that ru- when that water is rushing in, you cannot do anything because oh, yeah. water is one of the most scariest <laughs> elements. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I don't know about the kids. In, I, I mean, I'm sure it's different too. Like, it's not like you can swim or anything, but I wonder how many of those Pakistani refugees even knew like mm-hmm. had they ever seen the wall like you know what i mean like yeah no, that's, scary. that's a different level too mm-hmm. right like yeah definitely but one thing about the korean thing though it's it was i can't remember when we went i think it was us that went to like the like that the cindy center right and like they had the all the tents set up and like the parents or the people were still mourning them and it was like five years after yeah and yeah. they're still there mourning and it's yeah. like it's tough to walk by man yeah and like when that ship capsized and it was like kind of sinking, you know, there's always that glimmer of hope of trapped air. Maybe the kids are alive. Mm. So everyone was like, go save them. Well, what's everyone doing? Dive down and save them. Right. But it's just impossible. <coughs> there's dri- there's divers that tried to save them that went like professional divers, right? Some of them died. Yeah. Because the pressure, the right. water current inside the ocean, oh. even like I'm a pretty good swimmer. But if I go into that depth or yeah. like even a river or something, the doing? inside current's going to kill yeah. you. Never underestimate water. Because no, even like you see in the movies like Titanic, when the water is rushing in, you can't do anything. Mm. You're going to die. Mm-hmm. That's going to hit. Yeah. I no. can't emphasize that enough. No, it's, yeah. it's so true. And like, it's hard to think because like when, when we see water, it's like you just put your hand through. It's like, it's nothing, right? Yeah. But like, yeah. It's like water at that force. It's oh. like a brick wall. It's like yeah. it's stone coming at you. They right? see that if you, if a tsunami hits you, the first thing that's gonna happen to you is you're gonna get knocked out. Wow! Because the brick wall just hit, yeah. hitting you at the best, <laughs> biggest force. Because like when you jump off a bridge, yeah, right. When you hit the water, it's concrete basically. Yeah, yeah. it's basically concrete. So yeah, water is dangerous, man. Have you ever went into the swimming pool, like the deep end? Went down like three meters. Yeah. Your head hurts, Oh, right? yeah, oh, yeah. That's Ears the pressure of the water. Going, right. And you're only three meters deep. Like, yeah. Imagine like 10, like <clears throat> that times How do free 20. divers do it? They're professionals. I don't know. That's crazy. Because <laughs> they, they, they go deep. They, they must have some kind of air compression or something too. No, they're naked bodies. Oh, really? Yeah. Free, all they have is like a line that goes all the way down. Really? They just follow the line all the way down. I'm pretty sure the, the record is like 200 meters. They must have some kind of like method of yeah, the pressure must be maybe there's some breathing technique or something maybe like to the point, maybe you suck all your lungs air out almost so like you're just like i don't know like, yeah i would love fun. to do that yeah yeah i mean you're like a lifeguard right yeah yeah you still you don't you haven't done that in a while no i could never get hired oh is that what it was mm-hmm. yeah there's too many of them no i just sucked <laughs> <laughs> why 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 no, i just like feel the test and stuff for because uh, like this is when i was like grade 12 and I was way too nervous, uh, like getting the job, like I need to perform well, so much pressure. Yeah. So I just, you, it's when you're so pressured that you can't perform the way mm-hmm. you want. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's why Philip Zidina couldn't perform in Detroit. <clears throat> that's a great point. Maybe kids like Martin St. Louis has no pressure. Mm-hmm. So that allows them to thrive. Or they were already, because like someone like Zidina, right? Highly touted, yeah. like given all these things, oh, like yeah. you never like... When you're someone like this is almost like to me too like like I I will never forget when um I was going to uh it was like BC sevens like rugby sevens it was like tryouts and me and my like our friend Brian or well, I just say our friend but like back in the day my old friend Brian like we were both big rugby players so we both went to this tryout and you know Brian's like a you know he looks more athletic than I am he's a little taller he's yeah. black he's you know, like, <laughs> you know he's just, I was waiting for that right he's taller he's black the the coach literally shakes his hand great to see you kind of goes nice to see you too like literally dismisses me right yeah. but guess who made the team like you know what i mean like it's it, it's one of those things where like i almost felt like disrespected or almost like looked down on to the point where i was like cool i'm just gonna go perform like i'm like you know mm-hmm. and maybe he felt the pressure of like oh everyone's looking at me like everyone's yeah. like thinking yeah, i'm gonna be the best like yeah no i i know that pressure right i was a star in rugby <laughs> in grade nine or Grade nine, grade nine. Uh, don't listen to anything this guy's about to say, but please continue. No, no, you know it's true. <laughs> no, no, please continue. You know it's true. You were, you were like the highly, yeah, you were the Niall Yakupov. I exactly. Yeah, like you really Niall were. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Played out exactly <laughs> like that too. No, like I would literally have meetings with me and just the three coaches. Yeah. Oh. 
This guy. I was the guy. This guy. Grade nine. Grade nine. They're, they're envisioning me. Until this guy graduates, this is going to be... <laughs> I was like McDavid touted. You were like... Who, the who, first who, overall draft pick coming in. Gilbert Brule, you know? Like the <laughs> first, first overall in the junior yeah, draft. You said from McDavid to <laughs> Gilbert Brule. Like this guy. Highly touted. I remember, yeah. Yeah. They're telling me all the strategies. Like... Oh, man. It's because when I first joined, I just went in for like conditioning. Yeah. But we we're t- playing like two touch buggers, rugby. Buggers. buggers. So it's like football where you two touch someone and then you're out. And then I played. No one could t- lay a hand on me. I was just so fast. Mm-hmm. And the coaches saw that. They're like, wow, this is what we need on the team. This is this guy special. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't even like rugby. Mm-hmm. I was just there for basketball conditioning. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really want to practice. I just didn't like pain. <laughs> <laughs> and then slowly and maturely, like I just kind of disappeared. I didn't come to practice and mm-hmm. stuff. And I became a uh, nobody. I became a huge bust. <laughs> well, you know, you, you, you decided to focus on your other career, a uh, basketball. <laughs> and then you wrote the uh, bench. Yeah, I'm tr- <laughs> No, I'm trying to get, no, grade nine, I was a, uh, starter oh that's right yeah yeah, yeah. wow so you were a dual sport athlete in grade <laughs> nine. this guy who was like, i went one time i was a starter for basketball <laughs> and a fucking mcdavid in wow, rugby wow, wow. and then for basketball i became like i would say don't give yourself up, eric okay. branson ish yeah but eric branson like a brought, role player brought something to the team oh yeah yeah a yeah. role player <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he brought something to the team bro of course of course <laughs> And then for rugby, I became Yakupov. Yeah. So I understand Neil Yakupov. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I understand Zanina. Lafreniere. Kako. Kako. Kapo Kako. You know who I miss? Hunter Shankirk. I was seeing. I was seeing this like random Canucks TV video popped up on my YouTube thing. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was from eight years ago. Yeah. And it was them doing the grass grind. And it was like Boho Rat, Hunter Shankarik, like all the rookie seasons and stuff. Wow. I really thought Nostalgia. back then Shankarik would be better than oh, Horvat. Oh I didn't like Horvat just because we gave up Schneider for him. Right, right. <laughs> for like, one for one. Yeah. You know what's... <laughs> okay, I've been thinking, right? You know how McDavid got... McDavid, uh, no, sorry. You know how Edmonton got McDavid in 2015, mm-hmm. right? And Schneider got traded in 2013? Mm-hmm. But the Canucks had a better deal with them. Edmonton wanted Schneider. Right. And we had a better deal. With them. It was like Schneider for Eberly. Wow. For their Darnell Nurse pick and some wow, other prospect, wow. right? But we didn't want to trade him in the division. Exactly. But we should have done that. 100%. Because if we did, Edmonton wouldn't have gotten McDavid. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> no! 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 Hey, we should, hey, that's something that, we should look into. Like that is that is a big brain play. We should look at like like literally the butterfly effects of all those like <laughs> things and see what what would happen. Because like, I swear, if Schneider went to the Oilers, right? They would have done maybe better. they go to the sure. round one. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, we're not gonna remember. Yeah, but McDavid being on the Oilers, yeah, we're gonna remember oh, that for a we, long we already time. remember it. But yeah. it's kind of fortunate because we don't remember as much because we never go to the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time the Canucks went to the playoffs against McDavid? We never did. Exactly. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. He hasn't hurt us that much yet. <sighs> Dude, there was this that one, is trauma. There was this one goal he scored. Oh, my God. Sorry, I'm just imagining Brad Marchand doing a breakaway back on a long goal. No, no, no. That no, seemed no, me no, like no, McDavid no. on Demko. There was this play. I think it was Sam Gagne was in our zone, and the puck was like in the air, and like McDavid was like 10 meters away. And suddenly, all of a sudden, he was like bumping Gagne off the puck, stole this goal, and I was just like... This is embarrassing. Like this is like <laughs> this, this is you're so not even sad. No, like, it's just embarrassing. embarrassing. Like this is just like this guy is next level and the fucking Edmonton Oilers have him. It's just it's unbelievable really. Yeah, you know, in a way, I guess I'm glad the Canucks are on, not in the playoffs because they're not the face of David. Do you think he's ever gonna want out? Wait, David? Do you ever think he's gonna like demand, like be like I mean I don't think so, no. No? Because they're doing pretty okay. I mean, they're going to the playoffs. Maybe they're not run as well, mm. but There's they're not doing like least. Jack Eichel Buffalo level where right. it's like no playoffs, right? Ever, right? They went to like the third round, I believe. Yeah. Do you almost do you almost wish though that they were more like that? 
Like, you know how, like, the NBA, NBA right now? Like, it's just in general. Mean? Like, NHL players in general. Like, you know how the NBA right now? Like, oh. they've got the whole Lillard thing going on. Well, I want players to be like that, except for my team. <laughs> <laughs> you want them to want to come to your team, right? You no, no, no. To... Not even. No. We don't have cap space for that. <laughs> I want just McDavid to be like, I want to go to Toronto. Right, right, right. Just, just like, fuck Edmonton. the drama, right? Yeah. But if PD and Hughes did that, that would break my heart. Dude. I'm waiting for the day Hughes tells us that he wants to go to New Jersey. Because his uh, two brothers are there. Like, I'm waiting. Or his two brothers come over here. But, like, that's not going to happen. No. If Jack didn't have his breakout season and was kind of like a yeah. middling maybe, but... Oh. I don't know, man. It, it's tough, right? Because, like, like I'm looking... I was looking up... Uh, I was looking up the Lillard like, situation. I was kind of looking up at, like, the past superstars. It happens a lot in the NBA, right? Like, yeah. James Harden. I think this is his third request in the last three years. Which yeah. is just, like, crazy. And, like... Irving just got traded. Like, yeah, you know, LeBron recruits players. LeBron always recruits. Come play for me. You know, Kawhi went Le to the coach, Clippers the like back then. Like yep, all Kawhi. these different things. Like players kind of choose where they want to go now. Yep. But like I don't know, you really don't see that in hockey as much. Like I think it's a little tough in hockey just because the salary cap. Yeah, it's different. For yeah, sure. it's just impossible. Almost. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to see it. I think we should get rid of the salary cap. Wow, really? You think yeah, so, right? Arizona's already fucked. Whatever, <laughs> let them be. Who do you have like a luxury tax kind of thing? Then, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Have Toronto spend whatever money. Yeah, wouldn't it be so funny? The Toronto spends like sixty more million per year than right. everyone else, and they Still get knocked out first round. That's drama That's that I would drama. love to see. Yeah, imagine That's seeing a video. Dango. That's a video to be made. <laughs> 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 no, seriously. See, that, 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 that is just good entertainment, right? Right. right. Oh, man, I should I should be commissioner. Yeah, what? Who else could you see doing that? Would you see like, oh, you know who I was actually thinking that should do that? Yeah. Roman Yossi. Someone you don't really hear about, right? He's a captain of the National Predators. He's doing fine. But what if Roman Yossi was just like, dude, I want to go win a cup. Like, I'm done kind of like playing yeah, for the Predators. Yeah, he's pretty old now. He's still like, you know, mid- he's still producing though. And he's like, yeah, what, mid-30s? Though? But imagine him on like a, him and Hedman. Or like him and like, Obviously, the contract won't work, but like that, like I just, I just want someone like we always hear, always oh, McDavid gonna lead yeah. Edmonton is whatever. But what's Yossi's salary cap though? I'm gonna imagine like 10, 10 probably ten plus, right? right? Who's gonna take a thirty-five year old ten plus? Yeah. I but just what if he's I gonna really give you six? What if he's gonna give you six seventy points on the back end, thirty minutes a night? Like that's value, bro. But it's so risky. Yeah, it is risky. I don't know. I and, would love to see that, though. Right. That is just so good inter- entertainment. And what do you have to give up to get him? That's a whole yeah. different thing, too. How do you make that money fit? Yeah. So lame. Yeah. NHL, so lame. I get the idea of the salary. You know yeah, why uh, I want the luxury tax? Because I know Aquilini's rich. <laughs> <So> <laughs> yeah, but he's not going to pay him. I think I think there's a misconception of Aquilini being cheap. Hmm. Because he just bought out OEL right. for nothing. But he won't give the blueberry workers water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. But he won't give the blueberry workers water. Yeah, I love that joke. <laughs> I love that meme. Um, Can I just do... Actually, I want to do a quick little shout out, yeah. actually, to... um. Did you hear about this Pat Kavanaugh guy? Is he a football player? No, he's... Exa- I didn't... I don't know about him at all. He's actually a, a college lacrosse, lacrosse player. Okay. <clears throat> but uh, over the last couple... I think it was last week or something, the NCAA uh, National Championship was going on. Where? But uh, I can't remember where, but it was in the States somewhere. Okay. But it was he... Cat uh, plays for um, Notre Dame. Sorry, Pat. Okay. Pat plays for Notre Dame. Okay. Um, he's their leading scorer, right? He, so he just broke the record uh, for the regular season. The old record was 75. He has 77 points. What's crazy about him, though, is before this game, he suffered a nasty, nasty hamstring injury. Like, I can't remember exactly what it was, but like I saw one that said it was a torn hamstring. Yeah. One said it was just like severely severed. It was you're not supposed to be playing. Yeah. But did you see what he what he did? Like wh- how he he ended up playing the full game. Okay. And he got an assist too, and it was a huge great. He, they won the, they won the championship. It was a great moment. But the, the a picture went viral afterwards, and it was a picture of the back of his leg. And what they did is they did a huge band of tape below his knee huge band of tape up here and then they had one of those like elastic rubber bands on like when you use pull-ups they cut that and they basically made that into a modified hamstring so like they held like his back together and dude like wait wouldn't that but like if you had that kind of hamstring wouldn't that hurt so much inside so exactly so he fought through that pain 
to play and he, he basically he was saying that like he was waiting way too long for this moment like he, he was not gonna like he talked to all his friends and family but one thing that motivated him yeah. to actually play was his his teammate liam something he was saying texted him the night before the game a story about mike day yeah you know mike day no he's basically he was like in uh, like a war veteran a u.s military war veteran uh fighting in iraq um who basically like survived 20 bullets like he got shot 20 times there was a a grenade that got detonated in the house that he was in he got knocked out but then woke back up and then killed three more like people before he died like it was like a whole like what a hero <clears throat> you know that that's basically the whole story and he was saying like well if mike day can do that like i can play a game blah, blah, blah. And that was like his motivation but i was just thinking man like like i'm i'm such a fucking pussy when it comes to shit like that like like i fight through i played through a lot of injuries like playing rugby and stuff but like nowhere close to like a, a hamstring that's torn and like you band it back together with a fucking elastic band like that's just like is that is that the dedication you're talking about that you almost need like the kobe dedication like the or is that just completely just fucking nuts um i don't know when i think about that is he on do you think he's on painkillers <sighs> see probably right like i mean all, a lot of athletes that kind of makes me cringe mm, yeah see and you know you know what's actually so interesting right so what? If we had this conversation, say six years ago, yeah, I would. Oh, me too. Me too. What a warrior! Yeah, like, I like, think we're getting old. I, we're getting old because I oh also was just like, dude, buddy, what are you doing? <laughs> like, like I get it. Like oh in that God, moment, bro. that's the most important thing in the world for you, right? It, it really is. It is NCAA yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. you're about to win a championship. Yeah. You're the team leader in points. Yeah. Like the boys depend on you. Like. Yeah. You, you're gonna do it. Oh my god, are we actually? But we're old, Nick. Because oh that god. response is exactly what I was feeling. But when you said that, like six years ago, like that comment, yeah, that's what I looked up to. Yeah, even like making my YouTube videos, right? That's why I loved Carlson so much. Yeah, he, like broke his ankle for the team. Dude, Thornton had his what whole knee torn off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing like, but then now I'm like, I really wish Carlson was healthy. Mm. I, I miss him. Yeah, right. And you don't think about that then? No, 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 no. Oh. That's oh man. And the thing is, he lost that series too. Mm-hmm. That he that he suffered all those injuries. <laughs> and like uh, the, yeah, he did become kind of legendary in that did. series. But he did. Yeah, I just missed them. I was just like, was it really worth it? Right. Oh, I hate that we're getting old. It's but tough. I remember um, Kobe during a basketball game, his ring finger right fell off. Okay. Like, oh. dis- dislocated, yeah. right? And then he went up, and walked up the trainer on the court. He was like, "Yeah, dude, pull, pull this up." <laughs> and then the trainer's like, "Are you sure?" Yeah. Kobe's like, "Yeah, yeah." And he's gonna, it's gonna uh, hurt, and, he, and trainer like grabs his finger, uh, like kind of like pushes down on yeah. it. Kobe kind of like opens his hand up yeah. and like closes it, and he makes the face like, yeah, Ugh. it's good, dude. He's just different, different. Dude. And then LeBron gets a no, but I listen, a, I get LeBron too because like. Oh, I was playing rugby this one time and like when you play lower level rugby you do a lot of like double shifting right so like we have two divisions so it's like and especially when I'm a, when you're a younger guy playing like you're gonna play the lower division game and then you have to get ready for the the actual main game right afterwards right so that's yep. what two and a half hours three hours of rugby so <clears throat> I remember like at the end of the first game both my calves I'm notoriously my calves always cramp like my hamstrings always cramp I just have bad like whatever L- low potassium fucking kill me but anyways, my calves were both fucking dying. They were like, it's like with that pain when you feel like the muscles like going on top of each other and ripping and shit. And I'm like, okay, guys, I'm so sorry. I don't think I can play the next game. Mm-hmm. And the coach is like, well, we need you. Yeah, right? yeah, and, yeah. And so you know what they did? Go, I go on the ground. They grab one of the rollies and they start digging uh. into my calves. And I'm going, oh, and I'm lying there. I'm going, I'm not getting paid for this. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm 20. So, like, what am I doing right now? Like, yeah. is this, like, I'm, I, I love rugby and I love the competitiveness and I love all that, but yeah. is this what I'm really doing with yeah. my life? Like it really gave me some perspective. Now, I don't know. Kobe's getting paid millions. All these players, like sure, they're getting paid millions. They're going to win a championship. NCAA, if I was an issue, like maybe we think it's cringe because we never work for it. So why yeah. would you do that? But imagine that guy, NCAA championship, how much he's practiced. What how he's much been he's, dreaming yeah, about. Yeah, dreaming about since he was like little, right. like starting playing lacrosse. I could see it. Yeah. I think if I was in a shoe, I would do it. Yeah. Especially at that age but too. Because, you know, we're on the, we're the couch potatoes, <laughs> just criticizing players. Like, They're trash. Right. <laughs> That's why maybe you don't understand, but we just became those, uh, 
Those guys. We're the cranky old men. Like, <laughs> get off our lawn. <laughs> <We're> trash. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, well, remember if you if you guys want to be a part of this show, if you want to yep. have your questions featured, yep. please please uh, send their way to at Canadian Jock ninety six yep. at gmail dot com. Thank you for iGen. Yes, Torriz- Torizano. Torizano. And others who've, uh, who've sent questions who will end up answering uh, later yeah. on. But, but uh, yes, audio form, email yeah. in the title, question. I would say this. If you want to for sure like have your question feature, audio for sure. If you only send in a question format like via like just words, we might mention it. We might touch on it. But like it's not going to be like a featured question that we like put up in, in the episode. But. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like like we like we said, like comment what you thought about the episode, any suggestions yeah. that you guys have, and thank you so much for uh, all the comments so far. Of course. And remember, so great. Canadian Jock, a little bit of change, but we're 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 growing this. It, it's coming back. It's yeah. coming back. It is back. Different seeds. I'll cut big this last oak one. tree. <laughs> I'll cut this last one. Yeah, big oak tree, but nice garden. Nice garden. Some blueberries. You said. Ooh. Oh, I want to go. We should go. Like you pick blueberries. Oh, that so sounds nice. so fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to eat blueberries. Can we just wear a shirt that says like Aquilini's boys or something and then go and pick blueberries? Anyways. <laughs> we better pack some water. <laughs> yeah. I, w- I wonder what really happened in that. Like, there's no way they're like, you can't have water. There's, right. There's no way that happened. No. I wonder what happened though. Like, what really happened? Because there's... Just the lawsuit that they're thinking about, they would never say that. I guarantee you it was just something like one one supervisor said, no, you can't go right now. And they just ended up being like, oh, they won't let any yeah, of us yeah. drink water. You know it's just I mean? the, oh, this is another billionaire yeah, who's taking advantage. Exactly. But why would they say no like that? Why would the supervisor say no blue, no, uh, no water right now? <sighs> Yeah, I mean, I guess there's no, like, we're not even going to deny a human the fucking, is it? yo, they're thirsty. You <laughs> know, like, fucking give them water, like. I remember when I worked at Walmart a few years ago. I yeah, for people who don't know, I worked at Walmart as like a merchandising associate, but it was like a fancy word stock for boy. stock boy. <laughs> Pretty much a stock boy. <laughs> you know, it was more like replacement stock boy. Okay. Like chain the shelves and like whatever. Okay. But stock boy, yeah, stock boy. <laughs> <laughs> stock boy. But I remember I was like in the lunchroom. And then there was this girl that was like, her job was to put the carts away mm. in the parking lot, right? Mm. And it was like 32 degrees, sunny. So she was sitting in the lunchroom. She was like, I think I have a heat stroke. But that manager was like, what are you doing here? Get back out. Oh, like back to yeah. work. Yeah. 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 And I was like, damn. Is it, that that important? Well, that's the thing. That's why like you shouldn't. It's the same thing at restaurants and shit. It's like, we're so poorly always understaffed and poorly managed that like if someone calls in sick it's like a fucking domino effect like we're fucking fucked now and yeah. it's like it but it shouldn't be that person's like it's like yo they're sick what are they gonna do like you know what i mean like mm-hmm. but we shouldn't have to like, it, it's just i don't know mm-hmm. it's the, it's how the world's structured yeah but. yeah and it's yeah so anyways like <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, uh, go to college, yeah, yeah. get a good job yeah. where you can have water anytime you want. Yeah. Oh, I, oh and we should mention, because we're planning on uploading, well, we can cut this out if we don't end up uploading it, but we're planning on uploading it every Monday, right? It's kind of what we want to try and keep Monday to Tuesdays. Yeah. Um, the Friday, the Thursday upload that just happened, it was just because it was the first episode. Yeah. We had premiered it on the Tuesday, so um, yeah, expect something early in the week, every mm-hmm. week. Yeah. Yeah. Send us your questions and uh, yeah, please. I yeah. love doing that. Yeah, me yeah, too. I want to get everyone in here. You know, honestly, and join the Universal Hockey Discord. I feel like that's probably gonna be the best place to like get conversation yeah. going. I'm there sometimes. Yeah. Wait, well, yeah, we'll have to link. Uh, make the link. Yeah, it's already on there. In the channel. Yeah. Okay. In the in the in the description, find all us there. And yeah, like our TikToks and Instagrams, all naked right now. But we're, this is the beginning, guys. We're all growing here. Join us. Join us for the ride. You have to say bye. Yeah, just... Thanks for listening. Bye bye. <laughs> Why do you always say that? <laughs>